Um, I'm Prabhu Deepan. I am based out of Colombo in Sri Lanka. We started seeing, you know, massive flooding of crops. What happens is because of the economic conditions, you know, farmers going to debt in terms of borrowing, you know, uh, to cultivate by the seeds and they wait. So when they do harvest, they pay back the loans and it's a cycle that goes on. I remember, you know, working, you know, with this young boy and his family and his community and just my, how devastated they were when they had repeated years of flooding in, the, in their farm. And they own the land, but none of the produces. That's all tied to financial, you know, uh, commitments. And this also kind of exacerbated, you know, suicide rates among you know, farmers in Sri Lanka, uh, because there's no way to pay for them, uh, you know, food insecurity, because these are not only in terms of income, but it also impacted their own food uh, intake uh, and also the well-being. So he had to drop off a school uh, and, you know, start to work in the field and look for alternative employment, which meant that he had to put himself at risk in working in places that he's not familiar with. So he's from a rural village. He was in Colombo and I'm grateful that he was able to live with us and stay in a house and we were able to kind of uh, accommodate him so he could find a, a safe employment. But that's just one person, you know? And uh, so I think this is one family and you are looking at entire districts of people who are continuously impacted by the rain and the flooding of crops and just destroying of crops and costing billions of uh, rupees and dollars to the economy, but individually impacting and devastating lives. I think, you know, you have to look at the micro impact of that. And it's not just a one-off thing, it's a repeated thing. And I think when it happens over and over and over again, even people who are resilient usually start to kind of feel exhausted and cannot cope with the pressures that come along. Even those who are vulnerable, people who God cares about and created in God's image, they have no alternative. And we don't have the luxury of denying the impact of it because we face the realities of this day to day in our lives and some of others in our communities even more so severely you know uh, face it so we don't have the luxury of saying this doesn't exist this doesn't matter to us because it does matter and it does impact our life on in real ways you know there is no kind of uh, excuse at this stage to say we don't want to be involved in this something it should be a mandate of us god's calling for us in reaching out to people and reaching out to our communities and and working towards restoring the earth. I, I find it interesting because people say, oh, you know, God is watching and it is us and we act like nobody's watching in, in our day-to-day -day lives in the way that we are not living sustainably or you know, not uh, taking into consideration the impact of something like this uh, in the lives of other people. I think, you know, just the church to take this seriously because I think we really live in a region where it's constantly impacted by something and you think, okay, it's, it's a matter of being resilient. It's not. I think it's God is calling us to say, wake up.